Hey everyone, so so far Steelhead December has been a huge success. In fact, last night, December 30th, it pushed me over a thousand subscribers, which was a big deal to me. I know in the scheme of YouTube, a thousand subscribers isn't a bunch, but it is to me, so thank you so much for following along. So I've already uploaded all five episodes of Steelhead Stories. Those have got a ton of views. I truly appreciate it. I've done four gear videos as well, but I wanted to squeeze this video in by the end of the month. And what it is, is it's a list of five things that I wish I could go back in time and tell young Barry Rager, new steelhead fisherman, what to do to be more successful with steelhead fishing. So during the video, I'm going to post links to videos from the past that might further those points. And I also am going to include just a few clips of video just to make things a little bit more interesting. So let's get started. Oh, what a beautiful steelhead. Wow. So starting out with number one, and I'm just going to tell you I'm going to be referring to my notes during this just because there's just too much to remember. So apologies, but I'm going to be referring to this during this video. So number one is proper gear. Now I'm going to refer you to my 2022 winter steelhead gear list, which I done at the beginning of the month. The reason that that's so important is comfort. If you're not comfortable during winter steelhead season, you're just not going to spend as much time out there as necessary to have those opportunities for hookups. And what I mean by that is it's raining, it's snowing, it's cold, the wind is blowing. So if you don't have proper waders, underlayers, and uh, things to keep you warm, you're just not going to be comfortable. And while I'm mentioning that, carry a second set of clothing with you. I'll include a little clip right here. <laughs> All right, well, I got submerged. So that's from Steelhead Gauntlet. If you haven't seen it, it's episode one of Steelhead Stories. I actually got dipped in the river a little bit. Surprisingly, I didn't get wet, but again, it's important to have good winter steelhead gear. Those waders and my Sims wading jacket prevented me from getting water down inside. And as you can see, it's a cold rainy day. So the second part of proper gear is having a good system for storing your tackle. I prefer a chest pack. I want to be able to change things out if I snag up and have to retie. I want to have everything on my person. Get rid of tackle boxes, get rid of tackle bags. If those are things that maybe you want to leave on the bank with your extra rods, that's, that's understandable. But if you don't have a system to keep your basic gear with you, you're wasting time. So speaking of that, I know that not everybody can afford to have multiple rods. I generally carry three to four rods during winter steelhead fishing. That might seem a little bit crazy, but that way I don't have to retie when I want to do different methods. So I have one for float fishing with jigs. I have a bead rod. Sometimes I have my drift rod with me and I always carry a spinner rod. Having multiple rods just limits your time retying and it gives you maximum time with your line in the water, which means more hookups. So the other thing I would mention is have a list of things. I actually have a list of things in my iPhone in the note field. Before I pull out of my driveway, I look at that list to verify that I've got my waders, my wader boots, my wading jacket, my tackle bag, all of the things that you're gonna need while you're on the river. Because if you get to the river and you've forgotten your wading boots, or let's say your waders are still hanging up to dry and you forgot to throw them in, it's gonna ruin that trip. So make a list and it doesn't have to be super extensive, just the basics. I always check that before I pull out of my driveway. So the last thing on the proper gear list is food and water. Now I mention that because I personally don't like to spend a lot of time monkeying around with eating meals and things. I generally eat like a protein bar or a PB and J sandwich on my way to my next spot and make sure to hydrate because I'm so focused on fishing that I kind of forget the basic needs. Well, just like with hunting, if you don't nourish yourself, by the end of the day, you're going to be low on energy and you're just not going to spend the time out there that you potentially could have. <laughs> Those are some just incredible jumps. 
So number two, become proficient in multiple techniques. Now you may have noticed I've changed my shirt for this one because I'm going to be referring to a baseball reference. Now Chris Ellis writes articles for Salmon Trout Steelheader. He wrote a really good article on this several years ago. I believe it was titled The Five Tool Fisherman. And what that's referring to is a five tool baseball player. And those are the five things baseball players are judged by. And those things are hitting, hitting for power, arm strength, building and speed. To my surprise, I looked up a list while I was prepping for this video and two of the Mariners that I've watched over the years made the list, Ken Griffey Jr. and Ichiro. The reason that this is important is let's say that you're great at bead fishing. Now bead fishing is a technique that I absolutely love. It's really helped me with my hookup ratio, but beads don't always work. So if you are limiting yourself to one technique, you're limiting yourself to the number of hookups that you could potentially have. For instance, for me, when the water's low and clear, I'm generally fishing light floats and lightweight jigs. When the water is in a kind of a medium height, I'm fishing jigs, beads, and I'm always running spinners or spoons through those holes. When the water's higher, I'm drift fishing a lot. So if you limit yourself to one technique, you're really limiting the number of hookups that you could potentially have for that particular day. So Mike Iaconelli is a professional bass angler. He wrote a book a number of years ago called Fishing on the Edge. He actually won the Bassmaster Classic in 2003. And the book was just about how he got started bass fishing. And the thing that I took away most from it is when he was new to fishing for bass, he would perfect one method and before moving on to another. And how he would do that is he would take just one bait to the lake with him per day and he would fish that one bait until he figured it out. And maybe that's what you could do for steelhead fishing. If you are lacking in spinner or spoon fishing, like you've tried it but you just haven't had hookups, take just your spinner rod, take just spinners and spoons one day and really practice understanding what that feels like. So bottom line, if you're proficient in one technique, try to expand your horizons. I guarantee you, you're gonna hook more fish if you learn to fish different techniques during winter steelhead fishing. Oh. There we go, steelhead. Holy moly. So number three is become a water expert. And what I mean by that is learn to understand river heights and holding water. So what I would recommend is pick your home river closest to your home that you can go and spend as much time as you can during winter steelhead fishing. Download an NOAA, which is National Oceanic Atmospheric Association. I had to look that up, but they have prediction levels for most river systems on the West Coast. And if they don't have one for your river, find a river, like maybe a bigger river in the drainage of the river that you fish and use that as a mark to kind of monitor river levels. River levels are so important to winter steelhead fishing. It's something that I probably check multiple times a day during winter steelhead season. I have them downloaded to my home screen on my iPhone so I can check them easily several times a day. So the reason that that's important is the holding water is gonna change based on river level. Now, maybe you nail steelhead in one particular hole when the water is low, but when the water's higher, the water's probably gonna to be too swift for that particular spot. Maybe they'll still be there, but they're gonna be further towards the river's edge where there's not quite as much current. Not to mention different techniques work better in different river levels. So again, down in my description field, I'm gonna put some links to the NOAA website and look up the prediction for your particular river. I would recommend uploading that to your smartphone or even to your computer so you can check it multiple times a day. Oh, there we go. Oh, good Lord. oh my god. Oh god. Oh my god. So number four is keep a journal. Now I would recommend a paper journal because if you're putting notes, let's say in your cell phone or on your computer, technology changes and you could potentially lose those notes. I like to be able to go back and look at my notes. In fact, these are my journals. I have them here so I can read you an, a little entry out of one of them. This one was actually started in 2009 
and this one I started at the beginning of 2017. And I'll go over the things that I put in the entries here. So one, I put the date, I put the location, river level, whether the river's going up or down, and the reason that's important is maybe there's snow melt and during the day the river's rising or it's raining. Weather patterns, successes, and what with what technique. For instance, if you catch a steelhead, record what location in the river you caught it and what technique you were using. And I even put down like if it's a spe specific jig or a specific spinner. Fishing buddies, and why I say that is sometimes if I write down I was with David or I was with Risco, that helps me go, oh yeah, I remember that particular day just by who I was fishing with. Pressure. What I mean by that is how many people are fishing on the river. Are there a ton of boats on the water? So those are, th those are things that are important because if you're hooking fish with one particular technique, you might understand that, hey, even though there's a ton of people fishing, I'm still hooking fish with this technique. And anything else that's helpful. So I'll go ahead and read an entry out of my first journal here. I just picked one here. So February 2nd, 2014. I have a note that I went two for two that day, and I have the river name, the river levels, and the river was dropping on this particular day. I have number one fish, I hooked at noon, I have the location, it was on a nightmare jig, eighth ounce, about a seven pound buck, and then the number two fish was at 530 on a glow nightmare jig, and it was an eighth ounce, so the glow jig just has a glow in the dark head. I have down that it was a seven pound approximately hen. It was a fighter. I have the location again. And that's just kind of an example. So I can go back here and go, okay, at this river level, jigs were working. And that's why having a journal is so nice. So you can go back before your, your next trip, or maybe the water's high and you can't fish and you just want to go back and kind of look through your old fishing trips. So anyway, number four is a journal. So lastly, this is twofold, it's experience and persistence. There's no substitution for time on the water. That's just the bottom line. You can do everything you can to prep and to study, but the bottom line is just like with any kind of sport, practice makes perfect. So time on the water is what you need to be successful with steelhead fishing. I often say that you can do things 99% right and still not catch a steelhead. It's the attention to detail that will get you into consistent steelhead during the winter. You may not know it, but you learn something every single time you're out on the river, even if it's a day you don't catch anything. And what I mean by that is maybe you can hone your tackle system, how you carry things. Maybe you get more proficient at retying because you're losing tackle on the bottom of the river. Maybe you're learning where the snags are in the, your holding water and you know where to keep your line away from so that you maximize your time with your line in the water. But all of those things will make you better in the future. So the last part of this point is persistence. Winter steelhead fishing can be very frustrating at times. It takes fish to be in the rivers to be successful. Sometimes the runs are early, sometimes they're late. Sometimes the fish are in the river the entire season. But if you're not being persistent, you're really limiting your amount of opportunity to have hookups. So if the video was helpful, consider subscribing. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I generally post new fishing videos Fridays at 6 p.m. But during 2022, I've already decided if I don't have a video of quality, I'm just not going to post. So make sure to hit the bell. That way it'll notify you when I release new videos. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment field. I'm going to do a Q&A of all of the questions that come in during Steelhead December, and I'm going to post that in January. If I earned it, hit the like button. Other than that, thanks for following along, and we'll see you on the next one.